We all know water is the essence of our being. If we don't have it, well, we die. So what do you do if you find yourself lost out here? You have to have water. The problem is it's so dry and there's a lack of water. So how do you find it? How do you locate it? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you multiple ways in how to find water in the desert. So stay with me and we'll be back shortly. Ah, that is good. So I want to welcome you back to Martin Survival. And the first thing I want to go over is the importance of the shelter you can see I have set up here. And also some of the methods and ways to find water in the desert. And we're going to use some of them today in this video. So this is a lean-to shelter. Uh, it has a bright orange side and a reflective side. This bright orange side is going to help aid me in an emergency or a short-term survival situation in finding rescue. It offers contrast against the earth. So this is something that I call an eyesore. This is going to, like I said, have the contrast and it's going to help aid me. Search and rescue will see this much before they see a tan or an OD green shelter. So I wanna make sure I have a, a bright, bright orange side uh, in an emergency situation and uh, I also have this reflective side and of course this reflective side is up in the air during these hot summer months but in the cold winter months I would want to angle this side towards my body that's going to keep me warm during the day and the evening uh, that's very very important in how to set this up so as you can see here, I have this set up as a lean-to. This is one of the best ways to set this up during these hot summer months. The open face is due north. So this is still going to offer me a microclimate of shade and keep me cool, but it's also going to keep the sun off of my face and off of my body to where once again, I'm staying cool and uh, regulating my core temperature. Now, one thing I wanna add in addition is a bedding or a mat. I would want to gather some of this juniper duff I see in this area or some of this rabbit brush to where I can add, like I said, a thick mat to prevent conduction. We want to stay cool and this ground is hot. Even with this shade, it is still warm. So I want to keep off of the ground to where, once again, I'm regulating my body's core temperature. So now let's go ahead and cover how to find water in the desert. And first of all, I want to say there's many, many ways to find water in the desert. And if I explained every single way, I would be here for hours. So I'm only going to touch base on a few ways. So first way to find water in the desert is following the vegetation and looking for green belts. If I can travel the high ground, say get up on a hilltop or a mountain face in a safe manner, and I overlook that valley floor, if I see a green belt with large deciduous trees such as cottonwoods, mule fats, and willows, those are obvious signs of water and it is well worth the calories to get down there and start searching. The next way to find water in the desert is dry wash beds. If I can travel a dry wash bed and I see a low point to where there's moisture on the ground in a shaded area, I want to start digging. Now, if I'm digging 20, 30 inches into the soil and I don't find water seeping to the surface, I want to move farther down and continue my search. And once again, those low points and in shaded areas, I don't want to keep on digging. That's just blowing through hydration. I want to replace the hydration, not waste it. And the last way is cracks, crevices, and pockets. And what I mean by that, here in the Mojave Desert, we'll have large granite boulders, and if I can find a pocket, a crack, or a crevice, and I can look in there to see if there's water, I can start collecting it, then disinfect it if it's not rain runoff. So those are just three basic ways to find water in the desert. Now I'm gonna start my search here in the Mojave Desert. All right, so here's a sign of moisture. I'm heading down into this riparian zone and I came across this. Uh, this is definitely worth checking out if you do see these dead and down yucca stalks. You can see that it forms a bowl 
and it's definitely moist inside from the rainstorms. The problem is there's lots of little holes so that water leaked out and the inside has not completely dried yet. So I would say this is definitely a tease and uh, not good for the lost hiker. Right here is yet another way to find and locate water in the desert. As you can see, I'm on top of this large granite face. And on this granite face, we do have a pocket and this is rain water. So what I need to do is I need to drink straight from this. Since this is rain water, it is already pure. It's directly from the sky. There's no animal signs or tracks scat around this area. So I can take my aquarium tubing and stick this right in this pocket of water and drink fresh. And a little bit about this aquarium tubing, I carry about four to five feet of this in my pack. This stuff literally weighs nothing and sometimes in the Mojave Desert, you'll find water submerged in between two boulders. So what I would have to do is throw the aquarium tubing between the two boulders and drink straight from it. I'm not gonna climb down there due to risk of injury. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to rehydrate. I'll stick this directly in this puddle and I'm gonna drink right from it. Now that's good. That is uh, definitely fresh water. So once again, using this aquarium tubing and packing this in your desert survival kit can absolutely be a lifesaver here in the Mojave Desert and surrounding areas. So heading to this riparian zone, you can see what we have here. This is called the honey mesquite tree. And a lot of folks will say, if we dig next to this root, water will start flowing to the surface because the tree likes to feed off of water. And is that true? Well, to an extent it is. This tree definitely does like to feed off of water. The problem is this honey mesquite's tap root can be anywhere from 25 to 40 feet down underneath this hard compact soil. So digging for water next to this root is absolutely unrealistic and it's not an option. So what we need to do is we need to keep searching this generalized area and look for signs of water. Well, walking farther ahead, you can see what we found here. We have signs of moisture. This is a large cottonwood tree. Now these cottonwood trees they feed off of water. So most likely this is an underground spring pushing this water to the surface. These roots are also very useful as well. We can use this for primitive fire. We can use some of the bark for a tinder bundle and uh, we can use the limbs for primitive fire as well. So this is definitely a useful tree to know about. But what I'm going to do is since I see this moisture, I'm gonna go ahead and dig a hole. And this is real mushy, so I doubt I am going to find water at the surface. And it doesn't look like it at all, digging farther down. But what I can do is I can break this up and form a little bit of a cup. And since this is, like I said, most likely an underground spring, that water is going to push up to the surface and I can start rehydrating. So that should be about good. And now I'm gonna let this sit and we'll check back in a few hours. If I was severely dehydrated, I would wrap all of this mud into a bandana and squeeze it to extract the water that way so I can at least moisten my mouth and get a little bit of hydration. Now this is not a lot of water, so quite frankly, it's not even worth staying around 
to wait for the water to keep flowing to the top of the surface. So what I'll do is I'm going to head farther down canyon and continue my searches for water in the desert. Now heading farther down canyon, I came across this wash and you can see what we have here. We have a slow trickle of water. I need this water. So what I'm going to do is open up my canteen, simply set it at the bottom, and I'm also going to utilize my knife sheath. This sheath has a drainage hole on the bottom. So I'm going to stick that drainage hole in the canteen and start collecting water. Now this will take quite a while, so patience is a virtue, don't get me wrong, but eventually this will fill up right to the top and I can now start chemically treating it or boil it to disinfect the water. Then it's safe to consume. Well, I decided to get the high ground to overlook the valley floor, and you can see what we have here, a green belt. I see large deciduous trees, I see cottonwoods, willows, I even see California fan palm. Those are all signs of water, and if I'm real quiet, I can even hear water, so I need to get down there. Alright, so I made it to the bottom and as you can see here, we have a lot of water. This is excellent. I can now stay hydrated throughout the entire day. Uh, I see lots of vegetation around me, a lot of edible vegetation. I can make tools. I have fire materials. I have everything I need in this location so I can make my base camp around this water source. I don't want to make it in this wash. I want to travel the high ground and make my camp there. I don't know if this wash can pick up and the last thing I need is a serious injury or death. Uh, so we want to be smart about this. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and fill up my large 64 ounce canteen, then take it back to my campground and uh, start treating this by either boiling it or chemically disinfecting it. Now I can take it back and uh, we'll start treating this right away. All right, so we made it back to our base camp and I wanna now start treating this water. And the first thing I need to do is I need to strain the water. This water has a lot of sediment in it. So I'm going to uh, just go ahead and take off the cap, set it to the side. I also have a 40 ounce container and I'll do the same thing, just set the cap off to the side. So to strain this water, I am going to use a cotton bandana. Just going to fold this a few times into a nice square. I'm going to set this on top of my 40 ounce container, just like this and I'm going to form a little bit of a pocket. Just like that. Okay, so at this point, and I'm seeing a lot of the sediment even on top, so there's uh, quite a bit of dirt in this. What I need to do is just pour it inside and let it drain through. And I'll continue to do that until this canteen is full up to the top. Now that I got this water transferred from my 64 ounce canteen into my 40 ounce, I'm ready to start disinfecting this water. But just to show you how much sediment was in that water, you can see what this bandana trapped. I don't want that in my system. So once this dries off, I'll just kick all that debris off. 
of the bandana and I can keep it in my pack again. Now I have two different ways to disinfect this water. I can either boil it or I can use a chemical to treat it. I chose to use a chemical. This is household bleach. This is unscented. Uh, I do keep this little container in a watertight metal container. So if this thing punctures, uh, the top lid rattles loose, it does not ruin my gear and it traps all of that bleach in once again that metal container. So the CDC, they recommend eight drops per gallon when the water is clear. Uh, they also recommend 16 drops when the water is murky and cloudy. So this water is cloudy. Remember, it just strained the large sediment out, but this still has a foggy look to it. So I am going to start off with a total of five drops in this 40 ounce container. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so at this point, I need to screw on the lid and the CDC once again recommends letting this sit for about 30 minutes. What am I going to do? I like to overdo things. So I'm going to let this sit for a total of 45 minutes to let this chemical react to disinfect this water. And then we can smell it to see if we have that chlorine smell. If we do not smell chlorine, we then have to repeat the process. Well, it's been 50 minutes. And this water smells like chlorine. So this is telling me it's now safe to consume. But before I drink it, I need to disinfect the threads of the canteen and the lid. So how I do that is I just screw it on loose and I'll just run the water around a few times, just like this. And that'll be good. Now I have another piece of cotton here. This is a shemog, and I'll just place this on top just in case there's more sediment in this container. Oh man, that's refreshing. Even though it's not the best tasting water, I'll tell you folks, it is hot out here. And not only that, the winds have just started kicking up. And it's not a cold wind, it's a hot wind that is sucking the moisture out of my body. So staying hydrated is so important right now. The best thing is, is this stream is not too far from here. It's maybe a mile and a half, two miles away. So as long as I'm out here in the environment, I can keep on going down, collecting water, and uh, purifying it. Oh, that is excellent. Alright folks, so that's just about going to wrap things up for me today. Once again, finding water in the desert. And uh, before I get going here, I want to just say a lot of the time you'll see in these survival books and these manuals that teach you about the wilderness, you can last three days without water. And is that true? Well, in an ideal environment, it can be. But there is absolutely nothing ideal about the Mojave Desert. We have extreme temperatures in the daytime. Sometimes we'll get extreme low temperatures in the evening. We have a lack of shade and that sun literally sucks the moisture right out of your body. So stay hydrated, be smart about this folks. Always carry water, carry plenty of it. When you're traveling long distances, keep that in your pack and also keep some in your vehicle kit. So with that, I do appreciate you joining me for this video. I'm Jeff with martinsurvival.com and we'll see you in the next one.